hey what's up guys and welcome back and today i'm going to be giving you part five of what if naruto was the king of curses sukuna remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual share this to all of your friends on your social media platform and also guys don't forget to go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if naruto was Half Viltramite and half Kryptonian over an anime king 3. And I hope you guys enjoy. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels. And also, the poll will be up tomorrow. So, stay in tune and vote guys. And I really hope you enjoy. So, without further ado or wasting any more time. What do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Begin now guys. the last part we left off. The white hair woman, now known as Udahume, had a memory of the past where the sage of six paths stood in front of someone. The sage was battered and bloody. She was going to intervene until a person shouted at her, calling out her name Udahume, for her to stay back. She snapped out of her thoughts though as she thought about what she had felt. It made no sense at all and she could not understand what was really going on. She felt her master presence. However, he was sealed away. So how was something like this even possible? She could not understand what the hell was going on. As she tried to but, she really could not understand. She had sent out the followers to go and scour the earth. As they had to pinpoint that source of energy, she had no idea what was going on but she will find out. Because this made no possible sense. Her master, she felt him. We then skipped to Kanoha as Naruto was making his way. Hatake had called for them. It seems like he wanted to have some sort of meeting with them. However, Naruto already knew what this was about. It was about the upcoming tuning exams. He was really looking forward to that. It sounded fun. Really, really fun. As he proceeded to make his way until he came across Konkuro trying to bully Konohamaru. As Naruto stood there, raising an eyebrow to that, he did not give a damn about Konohamaru but he noticed the headband of Konkuro. A smile came on his face, a rather happy smile when he saw it. Konkuro was hit so hard he was sent flying through several trees before he finally crashed down hard. He tried to pick himself up. Tamari rushed in with her fan but it was caught. To her complete shock and surprise, she was easily disarmed and kicked away. That is when Gara appeared. The children ran away in fear as Naruto stood there. Gara lowered himself as he came face to face with Naruto. They started to talk but more like Naruto mocking him until Naruto decided to retaliate. For no reason, as he attacked Gara, the sand was strong but somehow, Naruto broke through it, surprising majority of them. They could not understand, knowing Gara and knowing what his sand is capable of. Gara's sand then snatched up Naruto and started to squeeze, the living heck out of him. It started tightening around him however, Naruto exploded out of it and proceeded to assault Gara. They were forcefully pushed out into the village center as Naruto was the one egging this on. Once they arrived there, Naruto started to gain more bloodlust, his nails started to elongate. However, the Anvus arrived and shouted at them to stand down. 
Eventually, Naruto stand down though, knowing that the old man would come with some problems. So he stood down and made his way, as expected Kakashi, signed them up for the exams. Kakashi really did not want to sign Naruto up for the exams. As much as he respected Minato and Kushina, he had no idea what the hell Naruto was. He showed no example of either of them. He was just a force of something Kakashi could not even understand to this day. As the boy had no manners, he did not seem to care for anyone or anything. All he seemed to want was destruction and chaos. When the day finally came, they made their way inside. It did not take too long for them to get past the first exam. As Naruto had made it clear that he was going to kill a majority of them without battering an eye at them. So with that, they made their way inside toward the second test. As Naruto decided to leave his team, he told them he had things to do and left them where they were. So they were forced to make their way off until they were soon attacked by the snake son in Urchimaru. While that was going on, Naruto was butchering several teams. Yes, brutally ripping and killing them. There was no joke. It was pure chaos and destruction in his wake. As a lot of bodies were left behind him even, Kanoha ninjas. When Naruto arrived to see the Sani, Naruto knocked Sakura out, surprising and confusing Urchimaru. He then told the man that he wished to join his side, as he wanted to bring Kanoha to its knees as well. Urchimaru was skeptical of this, as he was not one to just believe someone immediately. However, he told Naruto that he would be in contact with him. So with that, they finished the rest of the exams. Naruto not explaining much had happened until Sakura ran her mouth that Orochimaru was out there. But Naruto did not care much for that. He would soon get what he desired. Upon looking at what happened within the forest, Hiruzen saw it best to remove Naruto from the Shinobi program. Yes, that was the only way. He had killed Konoha ninjas in cold blood. He had shredded them apart, not to mention from the reports that Kakashi turned in. The child was just not stable, and Hiruzen decided to fix it before things became out of hand and he could no longer do anything about it. So yes, and he told Jiraiya about this. In the preliminaries, Naruto made it a point to humiliate Hinata, saying how worthless she was and how weak she was. As for his opponent, Naruto demolished Kiba. Kiba was nothing to him, as Naruto even saw him as too pathetic to kill. He was like a pathetic bug that he could squash at any moment. Jiraiya find Naruto not too long after within the forest. As he made it clear that he was going to be removed, he shouldn't have said that but he wanted the kid to know. Once the exam was over but there could be a chance of redemption if he played his cards right. As Naruto played Jiraiya like a fool, making him believe that he was acting that way because of the way that he grew up. However, Naruto was sure by now that Jiraiya was the one with the key. Yes, he did. He had the key for the seal on him. That is when a smile came on Naruto's face. However, behind them, someone was watching in the shadows as a person made their way off when Naruto moved. So yeah, guys, so basically, let's pull it off. If you guys can switch across the place to yourself so to begin this new episode. We begin this episode with Kabuto Yakushi. As he was currently sneaking into Naruto's apartment, he had his reasons. The door was strangely unlocked. It seems like entering was a, well, one way in and not coming out. The child did not give a damn about most things and majority of the people fear him. Yes, a lot of them did. From just his attitude alone, but he was not all talk. He would kill you without even asking a question. He has done some rather bad things to several villagers who tried to mess with him. Well, it was their fault. They should have stayed away. They should see that he was not an ordinary child, someone to be tampered with in the slightest. As Kabuta snuck inside, someone dropped right on his back, surprising the spectacle ninja. Kabuta did not understand how he was caught off guard. 
He was a trained spy and an assassin. He has snuck in or entered on several occasions into places that were higher security than this. And he was completely certain that Nuta did not see him. So how did he know? Five seconds he heard. That's all you get to explain why you're here. One second over and you're dead. As the seconds start to tick down, four, three, Naruto was counting down his nails, pressed against Kabuta's throat. Two, one, Lord Urchimar sent me, Kabuta said. Kabuto had never been placed in a situation like this before. The slightest move his life would end, as he could feel the nails pressing against his jugular. One flinch or a single movement and his throat would be ripped out. It was never his intention to say that. However, he had to, to spare his own life. As Naruto jumped down and landed, he looked at the spectacle ninja. As he walked by him and kicked the door shut, Naruto made his way towards the fridge. As he pulled out something, it was a soda. He tore the lid off as he started to drink before. He tossed the can as it landed in the bin nearby. Well, I see I don't get the courtesy of getting something to drink as well. Slice. Several pieces of Kabuta here was sliced off. As a ninja had duck, but his hair was still sliced. I suggest you don't test my patience, whoever the damn you are. Now tell me, what did the snake say to you? Kabuta let the disrespect slide, but he still spoke. Aruchimar Sama told me that he was interested in your proposition about you joining our side. Good, said Naruto. But, said Kabuto, as Naruto gave him a very nasty look, he doesn't know if he can fully trust you yet. After all, you are still a Kanoha ninja. It seems like it was taking a lot for Naruto not to just kill Kabuto right now, judging by the look on his face. There's an attack coming very soon. I won't tell you when, but if you're good enough, you should know. Said Kabuto with a smirk. My lord, want to see you participate in that attack and kill as many Kanoha ninja as you can. Once that is done, he will know that he can trust you without a doubt. As Naruto was quiet for a while, he gave a simple nod before he said leave. Kabuto did not need to be told twice. This child was unstable. Aruchimar Sama would do good with him. He seemed to be a follower, not a leader. How wrong Kabuta was, as Naruto was grinning to himself. As, as he expected, there will be an attack on the Chunin exams finals. That is what he was looking forward to. However, he need to warm up with the other Sanin first to find out exactly where that key is. Once he get his hand on that key, he will be virtually unstoppable, he thought to himself. He could feel it. All of his power kept behind that damn bars. He still did not know what was behind it, but it will be the answers that he seek to find out about his past and everything. Time skip. Jiraiya entered through the window. He did not say anything as he went and sat down. It's been three weeks now since he came back to the village. Three weeks of trying to be on good terms with Naruto. A lot has happened. Hiruzen glanced over towards him. Another successful week, I presume Hiruzen acts. Basically hoping. Look, Sensei, I know that you're busy with being a Hokage and all, but... I don't think that your judgment is correct on this one. What? Hiruzen said, it's been three weeks now. I've been training the kid in standard, well, genuine process. You've asked me to not turn him into a summoner, and I did not. However, I've been seeing cracks in his personality. Cracks? Hiruzen said. Yeah, cracks. I know that he's done some things. I know that he behaved a certain way, but I can now see where it is coming from. And where is that here as an axe? Loneliness. Even after 
a full day of missions, he returned back to an empty house alone. There are certain ways that he talk about his life. And it depicts someone of just having nothing. He doesn't have any friends because he doesn't know how to make any. He doesn't understand the concept of friendship, love, bonding, anything like that. I don't think that he's a true bad person. I just think that he doesn't have control over his emotions. You remember in the past when that program wanted to strip the kids from their emotions and make them better soldiers. Here is a nodded. Of course he knew. I think that it was different with Naruto. I think that he was just born with this strange ability to not connect to his emotions. Because I can tell you, he's a killer. And he doesn't feel much remorse because he can't express it. He doesn't know how to. The environment that he was growing up in, the red light district, people around there is not very nice and you know that. The things that he saw, he mimicked the way that people speak to one another. So killing means nothing to him. Cursing at someone means nothing to him because that is what he's used to. I know that you've made your judgment, but I actually agree with you on that one. But you just said, wait, it's different. Let me be the one to guide him. You say to yourself, you will give him a chance for redemption. So one year after you remove him from the program, give me one year with him. And I promise there will be some significant changes. Hiruzen looked at the man. He was still going to take Naruto out until Jurei could do something about everything with him. Fine, he said. But only one year, he said. Jurei nodded. You'll see, Sensei, he said. I'll make a real good ninja out of him. Someone that his parents would be very proud of. We'll just have to see, Hiruzen said to him. Time skip. As Naruto stood in the field, he knew exactly where the seal was. It was with those damn toads. There was no doubt about it. The Sanin spoke about the seal. The way he referred towards it. There was no doubt. The way he talked about it. It was a physical thing. More like a contract, something that he needed to break it. He've also seen that from the pattern. Even Donzo Lackey had spoke about it as well. And Jurei did not have it on him. At first he thought it was that thing on his back. However, he said that was a toad summoning contract. Naruto did not act too interested in it. He thought the man would want him to sign it because he was now calling himself his pupil. He had no idea when he told him that he was going to be his pupil. However, it was good that he think that for now. So... He's going to have to find the location of where the toads reside and torture every single one of them until he get the information. That was the only way. As Naruto lifted his shirt up, perhaps there was another way of getting the seal off though. He will see very soon in the upcoming battle. Time skip. Kanoha was buzzling with excitement. It was always a festive time when the tuning exam came around. And this time, they have a rare oddity. The last loyal Uchiha within Kanoha. People will be seeing what he was capable of. And many were looking forward to this battle. A lot. As everyone had gathered. Ninjas from all around. To witness the new rising generation. There was also the important people. Like the daimyos. And delegates. They were all there to watch and see. How things were coming along. Yes. It was going to be pretty fun, many of them thought. So with that, Naruto was glancing around. This would be a true spectacle, he thought to himself, as all the people were in their seat, excited as they could be. Glancing over, he saw the team from the sand. A bloodthirsty smile came on his face as his gaze met with the redhead. The both of them had the same look. Yes. That look in their eyes. That look of constant sadistic thoughts. Gara. 
was feeling the same thing as well from his first encounter with him. This individual was trying to erase him, just like many others had done in the past. And just like many others, he would slaughter him. He was glad that he was his first match, so he could shred him to pieces where he stands. And he could not wait. It was going to be fun. Gara thought with a sadistic smile. Both Tamari and Konkuro decided to step away from him. They knew that look. They glanced over towards the individual. They knew that he was strong, but there is no way that he could stand up to Gara when he was in this state. Gara was going to rip him apart, crush him with his sand, and there was no doubt about that. Harrison glanced over towards the Kazakage who arrived. As he greeted him with a smile, the Kazakage making a little joke that he was glad that he was here because the walk would be very tiresome for Harrison. Harrison simply chuckled. However, he was having a very bad feeling. Ever since the Aruchimar scare, the feeling had not gone away in the slightest. Harrison got to his feet as everyone turned their gaze. Using chakra to amplify his voice, he spoke about the unification of the nations. Working together to watch the exams happen, Naruto was tapping his feet on the ground. Sasuke was nowhere to be seen. It seems like he was late. Up in the crowd. Seems like Sasuke-kun is not here yet, Ino said, looking around. He'll be here, Sakura said. She was sure about that. Sasuke would not miss this opportunity. Up in the Kage's boots, glancing down was Aruchimaru from his disguise. Let's see what you're truly capable of, Jinjuliki, he thought to himself. And he was speaking of Naruto. However, given what Kabuta had told him, it might not be too good to place him against Gara. If the fight got too intense, he would call it. That being the invasion, because he couldn't allow Gara to be killed if he did die. Majority of their plans that were focused on him would be ruined. And he couldn't afford that. So yes, if the fight get too hectic, if there was a chance, the blonde was going to kill Gara. He would give the signal. So with that, Hiruzen sat down as he handed the reins over to Jenma. As he started to speak, the first match, as Naruto really was not interested in any of this. Tamari and Shikamaru, tell me when this shit is over, so we can go down there and kill each other, okay? Naruto said towards Gara, you will be the one to die, Uzumaki, he said. Well... We'll see, said Naruto. His grin just as wide as Gara's. Conqueror realized that the both of them were literally crazy. He decided to step away from them to not get right in the middle of it. However, what if this guy was actually strong enough to take down Gara? With the plans that they had, he will have to even call his match because of what is going to happen. Damn it, he thought. He had to save his strength. Tamar decided to go through with it anyways. Well, that was on her. He was going to be ready and prepared. So with that he turned his gaze down there as Naruto closed his eyes. Blocking out everything around him. All of this was just a waste of time. They were all weak and pathetic. And they did not deserve his viewing. So he proceeded to close his eyes. It lasted for two hours. As Naruto did not react he was still lying there. Preparing himself. Gara noticed strange black markings appearing on his face. As he could tell that he wasn't asleep. Slowly but surely they start to appear more on his face before flickering away. One after the other. The next match was Shino vs Konkuro. Konkuro gave up as many people boo at him. The third match was Neji vs Sasuke. Something that everyone is looking forward to. The prodigy of the Hayuga clan. And the last remaining Uchiha. Neji made his way down there. He started to go on about fate. Sasuke understood his fate. That is why he did not show up. However. In a surprising last minute entry. Sasuke arrived with Kakashi. Are we too late? Tch, you're lucky. You're right on time said Jenma. 
as Kakashi merely gave an eye smile. He proceeded to make his way up in a sunshine, leaving Sasuke down there. This is what many people have been waiting for, their eyes locked and ready to watch a match take place. All of their viewing are focusing on this. It did not take too long for both boys to square off against each other. However, first, you still decide to show up, said Neji. Despite knowing that your fate would be to lose to me today, you are simply wasting everyone's time, including yours. My fate is to lose to you, Sasuke said, placing on one of those well-known arrogant smirks. It seems like you've lost your mind. He dropped into his battle stance. You're the one that's going to be losing today. You stand no chance against the Uchiha. Neji was not going to waste time as he activated his Byak gun straight away. The match began. At first, there was a lot of dodging Sasuke way. Kakashi had told him about the Haiga clan. More details about them to be quite exact. If they get their hands on you, you're done. They can seal off your chakra points. And it would not be easy to reopen them. So with that, Sasuke merely stuck to dodge. However, even he started to feel the pressure. He launched two kunais at Neji. He deflected them with ease. Sasuke backpedaled as he flashed to hand sign. He ran forward, creating two copies of himself. They were just fake clones. Neji dispelled the clones rather easily. They were not even shadow clones. However, when he was finished too, Many fireballs were raining from beside him. Two were raining from above and two were to the left. Neji smirked as he spun. The rotation as he diffused all of them. The moment he stopped, Sasuke jumped forward. However, Neji reacted and knocked Sasuke weapon away. He reached to slam Sasuke in the gut. However, Sasuke blurred away using raw speed. Lee was surprised. Sasuke was able to achieve the speed that he had in just one month. It was rather surprising because Sasuke was not this fast when they fought before tuning exams. However, Neji was able to predict this, having a teammate like Lee. Surprisingly though, Sasuke dodged. That is when Neji saw his eyes. Sasuke had activated Sharingan. They started to clash even more. The fight seemed to be going nowhere as the both of them were tiring themselves out. Neji could not land a decisive blow on Sasuke because of the eyes, and Sasuke could not get too close to land a blow on Neji. Sasuke decided to just end this, despite the warnings that Kakashi told him. He started to charge up his Shidori. He ran down the wall as Neji saw that coming and spun, decided to defuse it with his rotation. Guy and the others surprised that Kakashi would teach that to Sasuke. Sasuke hand slammed against the rotation and he kept on pushing further and further and further, expelling a majority of his chakra. An explosion soon followed that blew the boat boys away by the collision of the unstable chakra that infused from their clash. The boat of them slowly got up as they kept on fighting despite Sasuke arm being burnt and Neji looking rather exhausted. He might have overdid it with the Shidori, trying to break through the rotation. The fight dragged on, entertaining as it was. Both boys collapsed, physically exhausted. They seemed to be even. They rushed at each other once again as Sasuke threw a dozen kunais in a quick succession. Neji was ready to dodge all of them. He was so tired that his Byak gun was also dimming out. This fight has been dragging on for some time now. Sasuke's Sharing Gun was even deactivated. However, Neji noticed something strange until he was hit in the shoulder. Sasuke rushed forward and slammed a brutal fist in his face. He then punched him in the gut and kicked him in the wall. Neji slammed against it as Sasuke was ready to end this by knocking him out. However, Neji palm slammed into Sasuke's gut as Sasuke fist smashed into his face. The both of them collapsed where they were. Sasuke had used 
again jutsu on the kunais faking one of them where it was not supposed to be neji was exhausted and he could not read it perfectly however neji got up but sasuke was getting up as well however the chakra that was around him was far more stronger i won't lose sasuke said he refused to lose if he was not strong enough to defeat this guy he could not defeat itachi the bloodlust the anger sasuke moved forward and evaded neji's strike and delivered a brutal roundhouse kick to his face he slammed a brutal downward kick into neji's stomach dropping on him the extra boost in strength came from the mark sasuke reached for a kunai as he brought it down to end neji's life until his hand was grabbed by Genma. It's over. Neji was too exhausted to move. The pattern started to swirl as Sasuke looked at Genma. He took several deep breaths, remembering what Kakashi said not to let it control you. He calmed down as he pulled himself up. Before he collapsed down to one knee, Genma catching him before he could hit the ground face first. As he declared him the winner, Everyone was happy at the grace of the two shinobis. They fought well and hard. Tintin was surprised that Sasuke was actually able to keep up with Neji and even win in the end. But what was that strange power she thought to herself? She couldn't believe it. She was sure that Neji had hit Sasuke right in the sternum to stop him but that strange power helped him proceed forward. Sasuke was also taken to the infirmary as well. There was no way that he could stand. Finally! The loud shout of Naruto yell. As he jumped off the balcony. Boom! He crash landed hard on the ground. A brilliant smile on his face as he tore off his shirt and tossed it to the side. Look. It's that kid. Several people started to whisper to themselves. Gara came walking out. Off the stairwell down below. San already swirling around him. This match seemed like it was going to be something great. Jinma noticed the bloodlust that the both of them were sending to each other. He stepped back. It seems like the preparations were already set. This was going to be the last match of the first round. Between Naruto Uzumaki and Gaara of the San. Everyone decided to focus in to see how this one would play out. Majority of them hated Naruto, but the Sand Ninjas, they were not that enough here, so that was a problem. However, the ones that hated Naruto wanted Gara to kill him. There were a lot of resentment and hate up there. As Naruto was grinning, which made things worse as he looked at the crowd, imagining all of them being burned to cinders. Well, let's see how this progress. My son is quite the talented shinobi after all. The Kazukage said. Well, Naruto is quite the fighter as well, Hiruzen said. As much as he tried to deny it. Orochimaru was curious about them both as he watched. As he played his part for now. Everyone was ready. The moment begin was said. Naruto shot forward as Gaara. Send this sand out. However, Naruto leaped over the sand. Gara fired several sand bullets, intending on piercing him out of the sky. As Naruto twists and dives through them, dodging as he did, moving his body with that unknown energy, his cursed energy. Naruto landed before he blurred out of sight. His feet slammed in the back of Gara's sand. He vanished once again and crushed his fist into Gara's sand at the top. He appeared and cracked his fist once again. The shockwave was actually breaking the sand down as Gar was actually feeling it ricochet back towards him. He was strong, really strong. Gar fired his sand out in all different directions. However, Naruto was nowhere to be seen until Gar felt it as he looked down. Slice! As Naruto came out of the earth, Gar's shirt was torn and the slice had tore into his skin. However, it was not his actual skin. As Naruto stood there, raising the eyebrow at that. Gara grabbed him with a sand and pulled him into the sky. I told you, Uzumaki, this match would end in my favor. 
And now, I'll rain your insides all over the place. Naruto burst out laughing. Now that is what I was looking for. A darkness to match my own. Now let me show you what true darkness look like. A strange black mark appeared in Naruto's forehead before. He flexed his arm and boom. The sun exploded outwards as Naruto's arm was spread wide in mid-air. The moment his feet touched the ground, he burst forward at speeds that not even the sand could react at. He's faster than me. Lee thought with shock. He would have never expected this. He thought that he was the fastest Jenin, but he was wrong. This was even faster. Far faster than when his weight was on. This speed equivalent up to the gates. Gara felt a fist cracked into his face. His armor shattered completely. The sand tried to catch him but Naruto skated on Gara's face before he could touch the ground. Naruto picked him up and threw him. He rushed forward as a wall of sand appeared. He tore right through it as he plunged his hand through Gara's chest. However, it was nothing but a dummy. The real Gara had used the time to go underground, using his sand to cover him. He appeared behind Naruto. He held his hand out as the sand, shot out like a sight, intending on piercing through Naruto's back. However, at the last possible second, Naruto flipped in mid-ear. He then turned and sent several slices. They ripped through Gara's sand and tore into his flesh. Gara felt something warm running down his hands. His eyes went wide in shock and confusion. My, my blood, he said. His mind seemed to have snapped as he saw his blood. Before he could though, his face was grabbed by Naruto's hand, who had reached him. Completely caught off guard, Naruto bashed his skull into the ground. Sand slammed into Naruto midsection, launching him into the sky. Several sand bullets, several dozens were created. They slammed into Naruto's body over and over. Throughout it all though, he was laughing. Despite them slamming and leaving tremendous bruises and marks all over his skin that were healing ridiculously fast. Naruto landed as Gara. Face started to accumulate a lot of sand. He was going more and more bloodthirsty, tapping into the demon power. However, Naruto came to a stop. That is when he felt it. He knew that there was something about this boy, different from his status. There was something that was inside of him. Something that belonged to him. As Naruto took off at his greatest speed, far surpassing Gara's ultimate defense, and pushed his hand into Gara's gut, literally tearing into his flesh. Gara was shocked as was everyone else. However, it seems that way but it was not. Naruto's hand had become strangely translucent like it was made from energy a strange bluish purple energy his hand had turned into gar was confused because he felt no pain despite what just happened that is when naruto felt it something as he gripped it he then proceeded to rip it out of gar gar fell forward on his knees panting heavily inside of gar's seal Shikaku, eyes were wide in shock. No, it can't be, he said. How is this possible, Shikaku said. He remembers something his father told him. But how? It made no sense. There was only one person that could retake what was sealed inside of him. How was he alive? In the outside world, Naruto was holding on to a strange finger. As he looked it over confused, he did not understand what exactly it was. However, he needed it. As he raised it up to his face, Gara clenched his head. As Shikaku was shouting, mother was shouting for him to kill. There was a mocking. An exceed amount of force and power rushed into Gara's system, causing an uproar of chakra. That is when it happened. The signal was given. Naruto paused in what he was doing as he saw feathers falling on the people. 
Suddenly, Tamari and Conqueror landed beside Gara. Baki appear as well. They start to flee with him. Naruto was about to go after them until he kept on looking at the finger. He then proceeded to toss it into his mouth and swallow. The moment he did, the black markings appeared all over his body, beneath his eyes, on his chin, spreading, spreading all over. He looked up to the sky and roared. The strange bluish purple engine exploded out of his core. It spread to the heavens itself. That is when chains could be seen inside the black markings on Naruto's body. There were 10 chains in total. One of them shattered, releasing an obscene amount of energy that made the people around quake in fear. Considering that all of the civilians were put unconscious, it was the ninjas that were trembling. A feeling of death, chaos, was spreading through the entire area. Even Orochimaru was intrigued. Meanwhile, that was going on. She snapped open her eyes. She couldn't believe it. Urame looked around. Now she was certain. She was certain that it was him. She took off running. She could sense it. Her white hair flapping by as she moved at incredible speeds. Despite the limitation this body placed on her, she was still incredibly fast. However, it would take her a while to get to the location. Meanwhile, at Kanoha, as the fluctuation of power died down, Naruto was standing in a massive crater. He heard someone call out to him. It was Sakura. She was calling out to him as she rushed towards the field. Despite what happened on their team, she believed that he was still a faithful Kanoha ninja. Kakashi had called for them, for all the ninjas to regroup. Naruto glanced up towards Sakura, a smile on his face. Sakura was confused until he stepped forward. Sakura was feeling strange. As she looked down, Naruto nails, which were dark, were soaked in blood. And what was that? Was that flesh? Sakura feel herself gurgling on something. Your voice always annoyed me, said Naruto. That is when she realized. She gripped her throat as Naruto had tore her throat out. She stepped back fear and pain coursing through her vision. She tried to get away until he stepped in her spine. She could not even scream out. She could only gurgle. He destroyed her back. She crashed to the ground trying to crawl as Naruto rested his feet on her head. So that you finally shut up. He stomped down with incredible force. It was then that Kakashi knocked away two ninjas to turn to see Sakura down on the ground. And Naruto feet crushing her skull. The copy ninja froze. So much so that Guy had to jump in and knock away a shinobi that was trying to sneak up towards him. Ah, Takashi, getting sloppy, are you? You almost let Guy follow his train of sight as he saw. The surprising look spread to Guy's face as well. Eno, who was trying to help Shikamaru up scream as her vision had. Traversed towards the stadium, Shikamaru turned as his eyes went wide. The others looked over as well as they saw Naruto crush in the pink here, destroying it. He just, he just killed Sakura. They couldn't believe it. Lee, in his weakened state, was angry because he had a crush on Sakura. He tried to fight, but he could not do much. They stopped him from going out there. Kuruna saw what everyone is looking at as she saw the broken Kanoha headband. The pink here as you remember who. Kuruna weaved one of her most deadliest genjutsus. Aiming on killing this boy without a second thought. From what he said about Hinata that truly pissed her off. And now this. She was going to make him experience what he feared the most. And then end his life. Kuruna wait said Kakashi as he saw her running forward. 
Kuna and Hannah's Naruto drop to his knees. When she arrives, as she pull her hand back and launch it, Naruto grabbed her wrist, surprising her. Kuna was shocked. Do you really think there's anything in this world I fear? He said to her. The grin on his face as he raised his other hand. A huge slash appeared on Kurunai's chest. She fell back as blood started to leak. Asuma launched his knife, stopping Naruto from killing her. As Naruto jumped back, Akano Hashinobi saw what was happening and moved forward. He tried to decapitate Naruto as Naruto flipped over it and grabbed the man's neck as he snapped it. Flipping away, he landed on his feet. Majority of them were converging on this spot. Naruto smiled as he brought his hand together and twirled it. A slow fireball started to gather within his palm. It started to twirl and get larger until it turned into a arrow. He then fired it towards the ground. A violent explosion went off, blocking their sight, blocking their view, destroying everything around. They were forced to jump out of the stadium. The ground was burnt and destroyed. As for Naruto, he leaped off, aiming to find the third Okage and completing what he started, rushing towards the massive purple barrier. When Naruto got there, the Anvils quickly turned their gaze towards him. They saw his head bang. What are you doing here? Get back down there and defend the village. There's nothing that you can do up here. One of them said moving towards Naruto's direction. As Naruto looked down, the Anvu was about to place a hand on his shoulder until Naruto grabbed his hand and yanked him. The Anvu was not expecting this. As Naruto sliced his mask clean off, before he sliced his eyes out, the Anvu screamed and dropped to his knees as Naruto kicked him in the throat. There was a loud cracking sound as Naruto kicked his body off the roof. The others attacked as he leaped away. His hands were coated in the strange purple and blue flames. He then proceeded to slam his hands into the barrier. Teiwaya, one of the guards, eyes went wide as she could not believe it. As she was one of Orochimaru guards. The barrier started to tear. The strange energy that surrounded his hands. It was not normal in the slightest. He proceeded to rip it open, bypassing their chakra as he jumped inside and landed. Naruto then jumped on two trees as he rushed inside. The Anvu that got close tried to jump in as well but he was incinerated when it closed upon him, halfway. Naruto then leaped over the trees as he proceeded to make his way to try and find Hiruzen. He had promised himself that he would kill him. Upon arriving, Naruto saw Hiruzen facing off against two people. Their faces looked familiar. They were the first and second Okage. Orochimaru was holding a blade in his hand, preparing himself to jump in. The Sanin glanced over as he saw. Orochimaru was shocked. How was he in here? As he saw the blood on Naruto's hands and the sadistic look on his face, not to mention strange black markings that were fading in and out. It seems like they were not at their fullest for some reason. The son didn't recognize. But how the hell did he get in here? Once Harrison was forced to backpedal, Orochimaru moved over towards the side. How did you get in here? He asked. Simple. I tear my way inside, said Naruto. That's not possible, Orochimaru said. Well, I do the impossible, said Naruto. Now, time to kill that old man. Before Urchimar could say anything, Naruto jumped off. Meanwhile, Harrison was having a hard time fighting boats of his former senseis as they were ganging up on him. The One Tails was attacking the village. Jiraiya had to resort to going out there. It seems that Gara had lost his cool during the travel. Lucky thing that Jiraiya was here. As you could see a massive toad fighting the beast on the horizon. However, Harrison felt something as he spun. Staff in hand. As Naruto's feet connected with the staff. Harrison could not believe it as he leaned back. As Naruto almost ripped his face off with those claws. 
Naruto kicked off and landed. Harrison was about to say something but the first and second attack once again. As they were doing so, Naruto sliced. It sliced right into the staff, leaving a deep gash. Poof! Enma returned back to normal as he crashed on the ground. Naruto lashed out at Harrison once again. It tore into his arm, into his left, and then into his right. Harrison had to jump away, flashing through Einstein as he did. He spat out a massive fireball to clear the way. As he realized that Naruto's intentions was to kill him, he flipped away in a branch. As the first attack from above, the second from below, and Naruto from in front of him. Harrison flashed through hand signs so fast, his hands did not miss a single sign as he released a wing style that was able to blow everything away in the area. Once he was able to regroup, he realized now that Naruto aimed to end his life. Look in his eyes. He couldn't believe it after everything. He was right. Jiraiya was wrong. Whatever he was seeing when they meet up was some sort of fake acting that he was putting on. He had no choice. He could not leave him alive. He had to end him. Harrison knew that from the beginning but he was trying to see if Naruto would change but this proves it. That boy was pure evil. He had to do something. Harrison proceeded to summon two clones. Once he did, he rushed forward. One took on the first, one took on the second. And him, he went for Naruto. Harrison came down with a punch that shattered the tree that he was on. I knew it, he said. But I tried to block it out all this time. You are evil. From the inside out. Pure darkness inside of your soul. What can I say? I never give a damn about you or this village. And you piss me off so. I'm gonna kill you and then I'm gonna burn Kanoha. I was hoping I didn't have to do this but you leave me no choice. Another clone of Harrison sent down several explosives that blocked their vision. Naruto felt himself grabbed. However, when he saw Harrison looking at him, he simply grinned. Before he raised his hand with a flick, slashing Harrison across the face. Blood splattered as he slashed him once again. However, suddenly, Naruto felt a strange feeling. Harrison had quickly went through Hansen before he had grabbed Naruto. That is when Naruto saw something behind him. A strange creature with white hair, purple skin, golden eyes. The beast burst through Harrison's back and grabbed onto Naruto's stomach. He started to pull something out of him. For some reason, he could not use his slashes anymore. He was confused. Upon swallowing that finger, his slashes had gotten stronger. But he doubt that was the limit. They should be able to just slice through someone, even if they were enhancing their body with chakra. Naruto glanced over as he saw the first and the second being. Done the same thing too. Kushina, Minato, I'm sorry. But I had to do it, Harrison said. Had to do what, said Naruto. You think you can kill me? Yes, and I'm taking your soul with me, Hiruzen said. This won't stop me, said Naruto. Something was being pulled out of him as Naruto tried to move. However, his body was stiff and becoming so cold. Orochimaru, seeing what was going on, was standing there watching as he pulled his blade, ready to intervene. He could use the boy on his side, that unusual power of his. However... He see what was going on as the body of the first and second fell, but Naruto would not fall. Hiruzen was dragging out his soul. Within Naruto's mindscape, the Shinigami was able to peer inside as he was going to end the boy's life. That is when the bars, the hall start to shake and unprecedented power start to roar and scream. Violent! Purple and blue flames seemed to explode off Naruto's body. However, in that moment, the Shinigami grip lashed onto the seal that was placed on Naruto. So the connection would not break. But that was a big mistake as he broke the seal. Just slightly though. 
a influx of power exploded out of Naruto even more. As Naruto's hand started to twitch, he then proceeded to plunge his nails into Hiruzen's chest, pushing deep as he could, tearing into his flesh. He then proceeded to rip his hand upwards and down. Hiruzen staggered as he lost control. As Naruto's soul seemed to funnel back into his body, the Shinigami grip lessening and vanishing away. Naruto then slammed his hand into Hiruzen's chest. As he gripped the old man's heart, Hiruzen fell to his knees as Naruto whispered in his ear, You did not hear this, but I promise that I was going to end your miserable, pathetic life. Said Naruto with a smile. And now, it's over, he said. Hiruzen's half lated eyes looked up towards Naruto. They will stop you, he said. Who will, Naruto asked. You can never destroy the will of fire. Naruto ripped his heart out. We'll just have to see about that, he said. As he pushed Hiruzen's body aside, it dropped on the ground. Orochimaru was standing there motionlessly, not moving, looking towards the old man that clattered on the ground. He could not quite understand what just happened. How was this boy able to stop the Shinigami from doing what it did? Even while he did not see it, he felt it, the coldness, and he saw the ceiling pattern on Hiruzen's stomach. How did this boy stop it? Come on, said Naruto. Let's go kill the rest of them. However, the first step he took forward, he collapsed face first on the ground. What the hell, said Naruto. The process of having his soul being pulled out like that had taken a toll on his body. However, this was because of the link that the seal had him restrained so much. Yes, the seal was restraining something inside of him which seemed to be himself. A very, very large part. There was a reason why the Shinigami couldn't just kill Naruto as it removed the other two souls. It did not seem like Naruto was fully human. Well, his body was, but it will have to transcend that. That is what he felt. His body was still being heavily restricted. When he looked up, the Sanin was there. Naruto tried to get up, however, his body was still seemingly in shock. Aruchimar grabbed him. As a seal fell, Aruchimar took off with Naruto. As he hopped on a snake's head, there were four others following them. Naruto glanced behind him as he saw several Kanoha ninjas, several sound ninjas as well. It was all running and chaos. He cursed as he could not do a damn thing. His body was slowly repairing itself. The seal had been strained and his body had been pushed to its limits because of that damn spectral ghost. As his eyes slowly shut, Orochimaru knew that the invasion was over. The sound ninjas were getting the living crap beaten out of them. Not to mention Gara had been subdued and Jiraiya was on his way. He could not fight Jiraiya and the entirety of Kanoha by himself. Even with the sound four, they would lose. So he simply took what he had to, which being this boy, and fled. Kanoha would burn another time. At least Hiruzen was finally dead. Once and for all, Kanoha was in Shamba right now. Yes, his sound forces, majority of them died, but still, he will regroup. And he will gather more forces. And Kanoha would burn. Meanwhile, Jiraiya stood over the body of Hiruzen Saratobi. His sensei, the Anvus, just told him who ended Hiruzen's life. Jiraiya could not believe it. It was all a fake. Trying to get on its good side for some reason. Naruto, how could you, he said. The Anvus felt worthless because they could not enter but the boy. Somehow entered and killed their Hokage. They will find him though. That's a promise. However, the look in the Sanin eyes. He was truly 
pissed off. That look of absolute rage. Unforgiving rage. If he get his hands on Naruto, he would kill him. But guys, let me end up so right here. If you want to see this person do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as they posted. Remember, share to all of your friends on your social media platform. And also, guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs of the other channels. Yes, all the links will be down in the description. So, yeah, go ahead, check them out. And I do hope that you guys enjoy. And don't forget to comment and tell me if you're new so I can welcome you personally. So, without further ado, always no more time. Let's get out of here. See you guys soon. Peace.